It's a thankful day as we kick off this Thanksgiving week, Sherry. I know. Yeah. And, and I have to say, I am thankful to be here with you on this journey. I'm thankful to bring joy and laughter and watch you just own this space in daytime. It, it's a joy to do oh. this with you. Yeah. It must be the Holy Spirit talking to you, because <laughs> John always do that. When I, when I, like, so he'll say to me, um, are we dealing with the Tasmanian devil? Today, because I go, like, if I'm nervous or if I'm going through anxiety, the, you know, the first person you snap at is the person that you love. So it was this morning, I was like, we got to work on this, and we got to do this. And John was like, OK, all right. And now you did this, now I feel guilty. <laughs> Man, now I got to go pray for forgiveness. OK. <laughs> Thank you, John. I love working with you, too. You're, like, amazing. <laughs> oh, you make me so mad. <laughs> This weekend, I swear I was in the streets this weekend. I never go out. I was. I went to the legendary Blue Note Jazz Club. And um, I love the Blue Note. And I saw this band. I'm obsessed with them. Tank and the Bangers. Oh. I, if y'all have never seen Tank and the Bangers, they won the Tiny Desk uh, series in the concert. But if you've never seen Tank and the Bangers, you've got to see them and a, a rapper named Rhapsody. And so I got all dressed up because I never get to go out. And I was in this cute little dress. When I tell you, this dress was by a designer named uh, Michelle Lopez. It was a gold dress, and they and they had to blur my chest out uh, <laughs> because the light bulbs was beaming on the chest. <laughs> And so, and when I posted the dress, so many comments was like, okay, you need to stop. You're not wearing no bra. You're getting ahead of yourself. And, but the thing about it is I got this breast reduction and the doctor said, Sherry, you can go and you don't have to wear a bra. So I, when the doctor told me that, half the time, I don't wear a bra. Now, I didn't know that, I, I, I was asleep when she did the rest of the stuff to me. Like the perky, the, the, it's always perky. I don't know if, can I say nipples on daytime? You, you just I did. did. You just uh, did. So they're already perky. I was asleep. I did not tell the doctor to do this. So in every dress I wear, it's always, you, it's always peeking through. As a matter of fact, Kim Kardashian got her skims. She makes like a bra that gives you the perky nipples on there. So mine was real and, uh... <laughs> But, but she's not on daytime television. She's not on daytime. <laughs> so to all of the Christian women who's like, Sherry, really, you need to stop. This is an unbecoming of you, of your level. I was like, but I just got a reduction. So you know how people, like, they, when they have their birthday, they'll do like a month. They celebrate their birthday for like a month. I'm celebrating a breast reduction for like a year. Y'all got to put up with this. I'm happy. I've had big boobs my whole life. Now I got these little ones, and I'm just like, I'm going crazy. I'm gonna go crazy for a year. I promise the doctor told me as I get older, they gonna start sagging again. So let me enjoy it. Let me enjoy it before they start sagging again. Is it okay? Ooh. 
So back to taking the Vegas. So I get to the club, I get to the Blue Note, and I'm sitting there, and somebody came and they said, do you want to go meet the band after the show? Lena Waithe was there, a whole bunch of people. And I said, absolutely. And the Blue Note uh, Jazz Club is so nice because they serve dinner, and you can eat and you can drink at the table while you enjoy the jazz music or the band. And I had some teriyaki chicken. I was tearing that teriyaki chicken <laughs> up because I hadn't eaten all day. And so it was so dark in the club, I couldn't see my food. And um, I'm used to my boobs being so big, you know, <laughs> so I, I don't know what was happening, but all of the teriyaki was on my dress. <laughs> And I was so used to having a napkin right here and wiping my hands on the napkin, and I didn't realize I didn't have the napkin, so I was doing this <laughs> on, the, on the dress. And when the lights came up, they came to get me, and everybody looked at me with horror. <laughs> Cause I had teriyaki all over the dress. And so, I mean, when I tell you the dresses, I don't even know if they're gonna be able to get the teriyaki out of this uh, Michelle Lopez dress. So I just said, you know what, I'm gonna just go on home and I'm gonna meet the band at another concert. So taking the Bangers and Rhapsody, it was the teriyaki that took me out. But otherwise, <laughs> y'all was amazing. <laughs> Now, there's a new holiday collaboration that I never knew that I needed, but now that they're in my life, I love it. The Queen Patti LaBelle and Cardi B are teaming up for Thanksgiving. Okay, I know, I know. Somebody said, what, in the audience? So Patty and her pies are joining Cardi and her new vodka-infused whipped cream to satisfy the sweet tooth for the holidays, okay? So the ladies tried their products and Cardi couldn't believe the smoothness of the Patty pies. And Patty couldn't believe that Cardi's whipped cream had liquor in it. Take a look. Mocha on mocha. the buttermilk. Oh, mocha chocolate. This is how I know you do. Creole lady mama lot. Put it on there. The yeah, the yeah. original. The original. Don't the, get it twisted. The original. Okay. Mm. Okay. This is liquor. Why do you make it so smooth as I do that? Do <laughs> Okay, I have to tell you. Love this collaboration, but it just never. I would have thought that Patty, because she got Patty pies, that she would have collaborated with some, collaborated with uh, somebody like a uh, Martha Stewart or Carla Hall or even like a Guy Fieri. Okay, but it like it blindsided me, Cardi B. I would have never thought Cardi B, but I love it because I bet you filming this commercial was probably the most fun shoot of all time. Because I'm telling you, I bet you Patty was like Patty's like the fun auntie that you get to sit next to at Thanksgiving. I know she get down. I'm, you, you, I know Patty get down. See, Patty was acting like she was shocked because it was liquor in that whipped cream. But I literally was feeling like Patty was like, give me another taste. I like this. <laughs> give me some liquor. N now, Patty LaBelle was on our show. And John, you sat next to her at our tasting table. Yeah. And it was Patty LaBelle, she was cursing. It was your, it was your birthday show. Rocco DiSpirito had made us a cocktail. Patty took a sip of it. She said, ooh, this drink is good, but it's strong as bleep. <laughs> and all I could think about was the fact she had a mic on. We was going to get fined by the FCC. I know. So <laughs> Patty was having a good time. And that's what I'm saying about her. I love the collaboration. But I'm still wondering, like, OK, we got the patty pies. What are the kids supposed to eat? They can't put the whipped cream on the patty pies because she got liquor in the, in the um, whipped cream. So I guess this is the kind of stuff I'm going to need when I'm cooking for Thanksgiving, that, that, that liquor liquor infused whipped cream. You know how you squirt the whipped cream in your mouth? <laughs> While I'm brining that turkey, I'm gonna be squirting that liquor, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Cardi B and Patty LaBelle. Happy Thanksgiving to you both. And this is the other thing that I saw. The Golden Bachelor, Gary Turner. <laughs> Gary Turner took his relationships to the next level because now the show was down to two ladies. It's Leslie and Teresa. Okay, so in the latest episode, Gary went on an overnight date, uh, two dates overnight in the fantasy suite. Now, that's where The Bachelor gets to be up close and personal with the lady. Okay, now, if y'all, anybody don't know what I'm talking about, you can just ask your mama. She'll tell you all about that. <laughs> so we don't know for sure, but it looks like Gary had sex with Leslie and Teresa. <laughs> we don't know 
for sure. But I'm just saying what I saw. Take a look. I have butterflies in my stomach. I have butterflies when I see him. I'm sad when he leaves. We compliment each other. And I'm definitely looking forward to my happily ever after. I haven't slept with another man since my husband, and I'm ready. I want to spend the night with Gary. And Gary seems just as excited as I am. When Gary was here, Gary specifically told me, he said, the fantasy suites are going to be different with me. That's what he said. He said, we're going to be able to share stuff about our kids and grandkids. <laughs> OK, first of all, I didn't see nothing going on about your kids nor your grandkids, <laughs> all right? Maybe, Gary, when you were sliding your hand down Leslie's thighs, you might have thought, I don't know. But nothing that Gary said made me think they were going to be doing a nasty in their fantasy suite. But that is exactly what it looked like they were doing. I think, you know, Gary got a lion tattoo on his arm. I think that lion tattoo came out and roared. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. He was in that fantasy suite, and I know who I know that Gary is trying to be young, he's trying to be hip, but he about to break a hip over in that tag on <laughs> fantasy suite. Did you see the way they were spooning? Okay, they were spooning each other. Now, Leslie, right here, Leslie is a yoga teacher, so she is not having any problems with that spoon. She is very limber, Leslie. But Leslie is a yoga teacher, Gary. She's gonna have you doing that downward dog. You better go on. You better go on and stop. Okay, Gary was in there going to town. All of them had their clothes on. It was the last that looked like when you was in high school. But I was looking at it, and you know, Gary's daughters had him get on the show. They had him, uh, you know, try out for the show. And I said, oh my gosh, if my daddy was on TV having sex with the women in the fantasy suites, I wouldn't be able to watch it. I don't know how to, I'd have to like have my therapist on speed dial. <laughs> Just looking at my daddy kiss, and like I'd have to go make dinner on those parts. And, like, <laughs> you know, and here's the thing what tripped me out is the daughters have to watch their father kissing and touching on the women. They say that we are all a part, we're a sum total of our parents, which means that I'm a part of my daddy, which probably means when I think about it, we probably got the same damn moves. That's what makes me. <laughs> oh, that's so nasty. Every time I think about it, like for me, Sherry, I like it nice and easy. Now, if I find out my daddy like it, oh, that's nasty. <laughs> Gross. Oh my gosh. I'm looking at my dog on daddy on TV going, I recognize that move. That's my dad going. <laughs> All right, let me stop. Oh my gosh. I don't think I prayed enough this morning. <laughs> But, Gary, I'm going to say this. We are still in your corner. We are still rooting for you. The finale is next Thursday. I cannot wait to see who Gary chooses. I am so into the show. Like, you know, it's such a truth. Uh, if anybody watches, clap if you think it will be Leslie, the yoga teacher. Okay. You think? All right. Now, clap if you think it might be Teresa, who's not, who you think might be Teresa. Well, I don't know, because Leslie, Leslie's all the way over, all the way over here. Now, he looked Leslie in the eye, and he told Leslie that she was the one. Okay, but then again, he also looked Faith in the eye and said the same thing to her. <laughs> so, I don't know. I I'm wishing both of y'all well, ladies. I'm wishing you well. I'll be watching it. Okay, this is a funny one to me. 50 Cent's latest, uh, latest tour has him bringing out the fans of all ages to see him. So, 50 posted a video that has since gone viral of 64-year-old Mary Jane dancing at his show. All right? Mary Jane is right there in the front row. I loved it. I was laughing so hard. And 50 posted that Mary Jane was the coolest person at his show that night. And Mary Jane says that she's been a fan of 50's for years and that going to see him live was on her bucket list. But I love, like, when y'all, you know... <laughs> it's so funny, when they played the video, Mary Jane was like, wave your hands in the air! Wave them like you don't care! I love this. Because Mary Jane, like, she probably look, look Mary, Lane, Mary Jane looks like she likes Mary Jane. I like that. <laughs> I like it. And again, if you don't know, ask your mama what that means. I ain't even... I don't want to lose my show. But, but when I was looking at Mary Jane, it made me think, what in the world was she like 30 years ago? 
okay? Because she was front row of that section. She was jamming. She was hanging off the side. I could see, like, Mary Jane looked like she throw her bras on the, on the <laughs> daggone stage. Mary Jane looked like a panty and a bra thrower right there. <laughs> I bet you Mary Jane was a groupie. That's the thing. I bet you Mary, you know, and it's such a trip to, to realize groupies get older. Groupies wear reading glasses now. <laughs> so I love seeing Mary Jane. I love seeing it was really nice that 50 embraced it. And I think that he should do something for Mary Jane. Um, I really do. And because that's like one of your oldest fans. And Mary Jane said, she said that she wanted a meet and greet with 50 Cent. And I say, give it a meet and greet, 50, but you better watch out, because everybody's in love with Mary Jane, okay? <laughs> Mary Jane's that main thing. She make you feel all right. Mary Jane will make your heart sing. And when you feeling low, <laughs> I ain't gonna go no more. That's it. <laughs> But I want to send a huge congratulations to gospel singer Kiera Sheard. Uh, Kiera and her husband, Jordan Kelly, welcomed a baby girl. And they posted, we are blessed to introduce to you our gift from the Lord, Chloe Drew Valencia Kelly. Words cannot describe our journey and how God blessed us with our miracle child. So I love this because they've really gone through trying to have a baby and we're not able to. And uh, I know that Chloe Drew better not get in trouble because Kiera is going to use her full name when she gets in trouble. That's a lot. Chloe Drew Valencia Kelly, get in here. So congratulations, Kiera and Jordan, on your growing family. That's so sweet. Y'all, we got a great show for you today because up next, we are chatting with rapper and actor Chris Ludacris Bridges. <laughs> Jerry will be right back. stranger to lighting it up on the big screen. He is already part of one of the greatest action franchises of all times. And now he's taking over the holidays with his new movie, Dashing Through the Snow. Take a look. My man, you gotta stop. All right, I'm gonna frisk you just to be safe. You know something? Have at it. Frisk away. <laughs> now watch out though, I'm ticklish. Turn around. All right. You know, going around the globe, giving out gifts. Uh, we just stirring. Not even a... What is this? Those are carrots. <laughs> Please welcome Chris Ludacris Bridges! <laughs> when I tell you, uh, we, is it safe to say we have been waiting for you? I'm like, I don't, does every guest get this type of love? What's going well, on? We just, we, we love who we love, Chris. I'm, I'm humbled. I'm humbled. I'm humbled. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just want to say congratulations. This is something that I have never seen before, and I hope that we see many more of these again. Congratulations, because you was on the cover of Men's Health. Uh, Showing yeah, your, yeah. your, I mean, <laughs> what? Sleek. <laughs> You, I, I always knew you were sexy, but seeing this, like, you maintaining the sexy, Chris. <laughs> What's going on? What's happening? You know I'm the king of CGI videos. None of this is real. This no. is all for... This, this is all is fake. Not, that this is, is not fake. CGI, sir. I'm, this is like... I'm the king of CGI. Okay, well, first of all, like, <laughs> you've been CGI-ing it in the gym. You've been working out. I have been. Thank you for that. But yeah, I mean, listen. 
I, I have to be strong for my daughters, for my family. I want to stay, I want to as healthy as possible for as long as possible. That's what it is. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. That is what it is. It's, it's certain, you know, it's just like getting here and you know you have to maintain it, but it's, it's, it's legacy that you're living, leaving 100%. and people depending on you. Absolutely. And then, you know, when I'm performing on stage, I have to be just as energetic as, you know, when people first saw me. So I'm not losing any touches whatsoever. Okay. Not doing it. You know, I do want to ask you that. <laughs> When, when, you know, it's funny, we all went and saw you uh, when you were on stage with Janet Jackson. Yeah. And do you ever get out of breath? Because I get out of breath sometimes when I'm doing stand-up. But that's like... part of, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's part of the reason why I got to stay healthy. Yeah, you get out of breath, because I, I leave everything you on sure stage. You sure do. 100%. Oh. And I'm glad you got a chance to check that out. Oh, that's you what... are amazing, you were. That's, and you. I, now I got to fly out there, because I need to see you on stage with Usher. You've been on stage with, you were with <laughs> Usher last week. Yeah. Okay, so when you were on stage with Usher, how much did did you love that? Every time we're on stage together, man, I absolutely love it. That's my brother, man. We're friends first. And, you know, we've been doing this for over two decades. And we wow. got some, some strong records together. Some very strong records. So, you know, it's always an honor and a pleasure, man. We love what we do. Okay, now, we know that Usher, and we talked about this, Usher's performing at the Super Bowl. It, I, we think it's gonna be a whole ATL spectacular. <laughs> Might we be seeing you? I, you know, I don't know, we'll see. We, we have to see. You gotta watch the Super Bowl to find out. There's, is there anything, has he even hinted to you? <laughs> okay, I wrote that's, but that sounds nothing. that sounds good though. Even you, you not, you didn't say no. Yeah, I, I don't know nothing. Okay, all nothing. right, all right. So we 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 can we, <laughs> we need to go get them Super Bowl tickets. That's what, that's what I say. <laughs> You know, Chris, you put Southern rap on the map. Like, nobody does it like you. But you said that comedians inspired your style. Absolutely. No, I, I grew up just watching, like, Eddie Murphy and, yeah. and, and Martin Lawrence and Richard Pryor. And it's just like, I love comedy. That's why when you listen to the music, when you see my videos, there's always some animated, comedic yes, you know, element in there. And it's literally just because I love to laugh, man, every single day. That's what it's about. You gotta, laughter is medicine for the soul. It truly right? is. Yeah. It's not a cliche. Yeah, so there you go. It is, it's watching you on stage and you go, your videos that accompany what you were rapping about on stage, it is, it just brings a joy Thank when you're you. standing there you're just listening to you. Yeah, and I love being different. You know, not every rapper is the same and I just love kind of carving my own edge out yeah. in hip hop of being this fun individual that just like, Anytime I can make people smile and make their day, then you know you're doing something right. You know you're world. doing something yeah. right. That yeah. is it. Absolutely. I just have a little bit. I, I want to complain a little bit about you because it's complain. like Come I on. always look forward to when you have new new stuff come out. When you have a new album coming out, yeah. and I think it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years. <laughs> right. Eight years since your last album. When, when are we gonna get some new I know. music? It's, it's the Fast and Furious fault. You can blame them for that. <laughs> No, really? what, I'm telling you, mark my word, 2024, new Ludacris music will be coming out. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Got to do it. Oh, because you do so many facts, because, like, you're up to Fast and Furious. What, what number? I lost count. I don't even know where we at. I don't know where we at anymore. Once you stopped, then you were starting <laughs> another one. Okay, so 2024, that's going to be the year. I, yes. One, uh, one thing that I love about you is uh, your marriage. You and your doxy. Y'all have been married for almost yeah. 10 years. Yes. Wow. Um, almost I follow 10 you both. years. 10 years. Woo. And, I, and I, I follow you both on Instagram, and I just love your love together. And you have children. Like, now, I know you say the album is coming out in 2024. Look at the kids. <laughs> but what, how you gonna, what you gonna be rapping about? You got a baby, like, changing diapers? What, like, what's... What, what? Hey, listen, rap is all about whatever is real and going on in your life at the time. I'm gonna figure it out. Like, I'm, there's some stuff to talk about because we all can relate to whatever the, we're going through at the time. Right. 100%. But, you know, it's, it's about organic feels. It's about making sure that we just give our heart to, to the fans. You know what I mean? As yeah. long as I'm giving you my heart, then you're gonna feel it. Okay, I know you're gonna be giving your heart. <laughs> this is what I wanna know. Yeah. Cause your wife's name is Eudoxy. What rhymes with, I'm in love with you, Eudoxy? Yeah, like what? Eudoxy. <laughs> uh, Pilates, I don't know, you can do that. <laughs> we all need to start doing a little Pilates. Okay, we all do. Yeah, yeah. Now your, your little girl, she's two years old, and it yeah. looks like she uh, could be featured on your next album, Followed in Your Footsteps. <laughs> uh, we got, we, look at this video, y'all. He had the way, he had the way. Oh. 
I love to get out the way. Did she know the first part of the song? But... <laughs> They listen to the clean versions, but they, they've been to a couple of daddy's shows, so, you know, look, luckily when you're backstage, there's a lot of feedback and a right. lot of distortion, so I don't know if they hear... <laughs> they might not hear everything yet, so we'll I love see. the moves, too. She got the moves going with it. Oh, that's her, her mom's from mid Midwestern Africa, so oh, basically really? that's a lot of those dances going on there. That's what they watch all day. Does that inspire you, though, when you, you know, in your music, too, the, the African roots of your wife? 100%. This is 24 hours a day in my household. It's all I hear. It's Afro beats. <laughs> so, you know, I loved it before, and I definitely love it now, and now the rest of the world is appreciating Afro beats a lot more as well. Yes. So, oh, know, man. It's a beautiful thing. It is beautiful because I love now seeing you, 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 you know, you branching out into more acting and you got a Christmas movie out which looks hysterical funny. Yeah, it's called Luda Dash. Christmas. Luda Christmas. Luda Christmas. <laughs> dashing through the snow with you and Laura Howery. Can you tell us about it? By the way, you see this, this poster, you know, the actor strike just ended. We were not able to do a proper photo shoot. Right. I'm not that dark skinned. I don't know <laughs> what's going on here. No. You see my complexion right okay. here and what's going on. I, I was always yeah. like, is it makeup? Yo, they left me in the oven a little too long here, Howard, <laughs> but to answer your question, this movie is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you guys, it is great. I feel like it's gonna be a staple. You're gonna have to watch it every Christmas. Yeah. You have a black, magical, mystical Santa Claus this. in this movie. And what's most important is it really has to do with healing. Everybody yeah. is going through something. We all have traumatic stress from something in our in our lives. Yeah. So it's really about therapy and being able to heal yourself so that you can be your best self for everyone else. And that's why it's important to watch this film because we want people to heal. That's it. Heal. That's it. That's what we talk. That's yeah. what we all about. Joy and healing. Facts. Most of, when you come back, can you bring your wife? Because I love, I just love watching y'all Instagram. I will, I will bring her. I'm going to make sure I bring her, I'm going to bring her with you. Okay, we'll bring do the some kids. Pilates with a doctor. We do Pilates together. <laughs> yeah, there you That'll go. That'll be a good one. <laughs> Chris, I want to say, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Congratulations for to you. Thank you. Give me some. Thank you. Dashing Through the Snow is streaming now on Disney+. Plus. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. The holidays mark a special time to make memories. So if you're, if you're looking to have a Thanksgiving to remember, we got you covered. Here with some of her favorite Etsy finds is lifestyle and trend expert Dana Isom Johnson. Dana! Girl, okay, so let's get started. Yes. What is first? Okay, so when you think of Thanksgiving, you of course think of all the wonderful recipes, right? Yes. But we also want to cement those recipes and have them for a lifetime. Okay. So what I have here are these incredible recipe cutting boards, cake stands, and ceramic oh, bowls. Oh, cute. Now here's how it works. Okay. So you're gonna work directly with the Etsy seller, take a photo of the recipe, mm -hmm. and then the seller transfers the handwriting onto the board. Oh, I love this. Yes, yes. I love it. It then becomes an heirloom piece that yes, can be passed does. down. Now, I don't know if you look in real close, but a little birdie told me that your family makes this 7-Up cake oh, we every do. year. You mm -hmm. put the 7-Up recipe on it? Listen, I got you. Oh, that's so cool. So this is printed on there, and then because it's a cake, we wanted to make sure we got it on a cake stand for you. Girl, my sisters and my cousins ah. gonna take it. <laughs> this ain't gonna stay in my house. No, but you know what? I love this, too, because this is something you can pass down to Jeffrey. Yes. Jeffrey can always have the recipe, and again, in a ceramic, a cutting board, or a cake stand. Oh, I love this. Yeah. This is a way to yeah. Keep it going. Exactly. Yes, okay. we love that. Okay, so let's just say you are the lucky one who gets to go to the Thanksgiving meal and yes. not prepare anything. Right. Please don't go empty handed, though. Please right, don't. You gotta bring Show something. up with something, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a really easy DIY. You go grab some olive oil that I've got here for you. Okay. You're gonna pick your favorite herb, whether you're growing it yourself or you get it from the grocery store, and then you just pour the olive oil right into the bottle there. Oh, so you pour it in here. Mm-hmm. And okay. then you're gonna have infused olive oil. So this is really great for that person who loves to cook, and they can have it. You can store this in a dry, cool place for like a month. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And then they always think of you. You know, so because my cousins, I know what herb they gonna have in their dog. I'm telling you this right now. 
<laughs> Auntie Gloria, I don't know if you want to cook with that one you right know, there. You like what you like, though. You like what I'm you like. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad. <laughs> I love it. And then you yes. put it in there, and it'll be infused. Exactly. And can use, that's a really great gift. This and one. And so it's very, simple. And it's inexpensive. Exactly. You don't spend Super a lot simple. of money on this. Exactly. But they're going to use it, and it's functional. I like to make sure people have functional items yes. that they're actually going to use. Oh, I like yes. this. I like it. Okay. All right. This so now good. we're going to move on to continuing to think about how you can elevate a typical hostess gift. Okay. Everybody loves to get a little bottle of wine, we right? Do. We yes, love a bottle of wine. Do. But here's how you can zhuzh it up. You can use furoshiki. Have you ever heard of furoshiki? I've never heard of furoshiki. Okay, so it is a Japanese term that's used that basically you use fabric. A to fabric, cover, okay. Right. I said to a woman, your fur is shiki, <laughs> but I've never heard of furoshiki. Yeah, so you're basically just gonna wrap the bottle of wine in furoshiki wrapping. I like to add a little sprig of herb, too, just to make it a little zhuzhy, you okay. know? Or a little crisp. Christmas bell there yeah. adds a nice little touch. But again, you're like leveling up a little bit. Okay. And not just having a, a thing to just give. We like the level up. Yes. yes. Now, the other very practical gift is a candle. Everybody loves to gift a candle, right? Okay. But like, don't show up with the candle in just a bag. Okay. Do a little more. So I've done this one already. You basically just have two boxes. You're putting a smaller one inside. Yes. That's where the candle's going. Then. Go to your farmer's market or your local store, get a bag of uh, flowers. flowers, and then you're gonna create this arrangement. So I'm gonna put you to work a little bit. So, this, you know, the thing about it is like, I, cause I love Etsy. Now, why is Etsy so great for, you know, it's like such a great site for gifts? Yes, well, first of all, you've got the personalized option, which we right. love, right? You can mm -hmm. really add that personal touch. The other thing that I really love is that you're supporting a small business. Yeah, so you know that's what I mean? True. Like you're stepping outside the. Here. Oh, yes. you didn't, didn't want to. I didn't want to finish it up, but I want. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I saw liquor, and I was like, well, "I'll do the flowers later." <laughs> okay, so now we're we're gonna move on to the fun and games then. Okay. okay. All right. Now, one thing I really love are these mixology dice. Okay. So you can ask all your your guests to come and bring some of the items that are on the dice, the dice. and it okay. turns into a game. Okay. Give me a little. Shake them up, shake them okay, there. Okay, shake it up, shake it up. And then okay. when you roll it out, roll it oh, on the roll table. roll it out. There. Now these all have ingredients on them. Oh, so it okay. has the spirit, it has herbs, it has bitters, all these things that can make really delicious cocktails okay. and mocktails if you don't drink okay. it well. Now, I, I did us a little cocktail here from some of the ingredients that mm -hmm, are on that, the dice. That we pulled, okay. Yeah, now I've got some bourbon, some apple cider, some uh, fresh uh, fruits and veggies, mm -hmm. all delicious You didn't in put there. enough in here, but hold on, <laughs> hold on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so cheers to cheers, you there. there we go. Mm -hmm, and what's this mm -hmm. last one over here? Okay, so now we've got some games. I really love... Oh, girl, you put that <laughs> bourbon in there. <laughs> you put that bourbon in there. Woo! All right. Come Happy on, holidays. Girl. Come on, mama. All right, now what I love about this... These are printable games. Printable, printable games, games are so simple uh -huh. because you literally, <laughs> you literally print them right from your home. They're all under five bucks. Okay. These are guess the Thanksgiving word. <laughs> this right here is getting in the there way. Oh, it's getting okay. in the way. Toss that. Okay, the and then, then for the kids, we want the kids to have an activity. We've all got right. that kids table, you know what oh I mean? Oh my gosh, them damn kids be running all around the That's house. That's why we want to put them to work. You put so the kids to work. Put them to work. We've got this incredible activity um, tablescape here, and they can just color and in. And they just color on the table. Color in while everybody's right. doing Right, and I thing. like that it's wide. They're not messing up my stuff. That's the you other thing. Coloring. You are saving your table, and it's still very beautiful. Dana, I love all of this stuff from Etsy. <laughs> I want to say thank you, Dana. And for more info on these products, go to SherryShowTV.com. Up next, podcaster Bill Courtney helps us give back this holiday season. Keep it right here. <laughs> Sherry will be right back. Recommending the best things to push play on. And my next guest's podcast, An Army of Normal Folks, is one that we should be listening to. Now, he's also the subject of the Oscar winning documentary, Undefeated. Please welcome Coach Bill Courtney. Hey! What's up? Coach Bill. I'm really, really glad you're here. Congratulations on your podcast Thanks. because it's taking off like wildfire. People need this kind of podcast. But can you tell us about An Army of Normal Folks? Um, it, we, we released five months ago. We've yeah. been as high as number 10 on Apple, and it speaks to our guests. And it's exactly what it is. 
instead of talking to all the smart people in D.C. and all the all those folks, we're talking to normal folks. Yes, and, yes. And and it's about it's about changing our culture through normal folks yeah. doing amazing things in their little corner of the world. And what could we do in this country if we had an army of normal folks just working hard to change their culture? And those are the stories we're highlighting. Absolutely. That's what I'm... Now, in the podcast, you talk about... You, talk, you, you focus on Thanksgiving. And you're encouraging people to not be a turkey person. OK, what in the world is a turkey person? So, the movie, Undefeated... Yeah. That was my last year at Manassas. My first year at Manassas was different. Mm -hmm. I showed up, there were 17 kids on the football team, and their previous 10 years record was 4 and 95. Okay. They were slaw. All right. So then mm -hmm. we started coaching. Right. Now, it was obvious we started coaching football, but in an area that an 18-year-old male is three times more likely to be dead or incarcerated by his 21st birthday than it is to be in college, yeah. we started coaching other stuff, character, commitment, integrity. Absolutely. Halfway through the season, we're three and three. Three and three. Well, I think three and three is pretty average, but when you won four games in 10 years, they thought I was kind of a fat, redheaded version of Pete Carroll. Or <laughs> so halfway through the season, we're three and three, and everybody's buying in the football, but only half the team's buying in the important stuff, character, commitment, integrity, those core values that yeah. need to be present in our lives. Yeah. So I went to my guy, and I said, hey, man, what do I got to do to get that team to buy in, like, your team, you're half the team? Mm -hmm. And he said, coach, um, they're trying to figure out if you're a turkey person or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, what you talking about? He said, man, Every Christmas and Thanksgiving, people come into our neighborhood and they give us gifts and hams and turkeys. We take them because we ain't got none. But then they leave and we never see them again. Mm. Makes you wonder if they're doing that because they really care about us or they're doing that to make themselves feel good. And he looked at me and said, Coach, what the hell are you doing here for real, man? Oh, wow. Listen, if you give away soup and soup kitchens or gifts to the needy or serve turkeys at Thanksgiving, that's a beautiful thing. That's not to disparage that. The question is, what's your motive? Are you motivated by the simple edification of someone not as blessed as you, or are you doing it because it makes yourself feel good? Mm, that's the question. You've got to check yourself. Yes. So the point is, we need an army of normal folks doing amazing things all over this country, but we got to do it for the folks we for seek to right. serve, not for ourselves. Absolutely. Now, you know, Coach, it's so deep. We had our audience take a survey about being a turkey person, so I want to see the results. We asked, do you think it's a great idea to give turkeys to people in need around the holidays? Now, 100% said yes, 0% said no. Of course, it's good to give away turkeys during the holidays. Ain't nothing okay. wrong with that, but why? Mm. Okay. All right, so it's just like, what, what's the reason? What's the motivation? Are you going to be there after the turkeys? That's right. All right, so next we ask the audience, do you think it's enough to just give turkeys to people in need around the holidays? 40% said yes, and 60% said no. No. So, well, you know, uh, I, I will tell you, and you know this, mm -hmm. give, a man, give a man a fish one day, and he'll eat for a day. Teach him fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. He'll eat for a lifetime, absolutely. So um, I guess you say turkey. So you get to give, uh, give, give him a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> He'll eat one day. <laughs> Teach him to get a turkey. Teach him how to go hunt some turkeys. Now we got some. There you got something. Yeah. Okay, so the last one is, would you feel good about yourself if you were able to give out a free turkey to a person in need around the holidays? So 90% of the people said yes. 10% said no. There's nothing wrong with feeling good about the things you do in society to serve someone. Right. Nothing wrong with feeling good about it. But when you put it on social media and you talk to your friends about it, mm. make sure what you're talking to your friends about and what you post on social media is the need that is in the community that you're serving, not about what you were doing to serve it. Wow. You've given a, me a lot to think about. It's Thanksgiving, girl. It's Thanksgiving, we got to do it right. Because I'm taking my son, because he needs to learn, like, gratefulness and, and, you know, stepping outside of his thing. So we will be giving away turkeys. But now you're telling me I got to not be selfish. I got to bring them back. And, right. and then keep... <laughs> I got to keep the work up so he can even do more. Most importantly, just make sure your son understands why you're giving away the turkeys and that you're not there to pat yourselves on the back, but to elevate people who aren't as blessed as you. That's, That's it. it. That... Boy, coach.
I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you, you gave so us much some for stuff. Having me. Yeah, well, you gave us a lot of stuff to think about, definitely, that we can talk about with our family over Thanksgiving. Absolutely. That's right. And I want to say listen to Coach Bill's podcast, An Army of Normal Folks. It is out now, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Jerry, we'll be right back. Hilarious headlines. We're going to meet Alita from Virginia. Alita. Hello. Okay, so Alita. Yes. I'm going to read three crazy headlines. Okay. Now, two of the headlines are fake okay. and one is real. Okay. You have to pick the real one. Okay. Okay, so here are your headlines. Headline number one, Texas woman breaks a rec record dancing in every state. Headline number two, British man finds money in chocolate bar wrapper. Okay. Headline number three, a 12-year-old drives 800 miles across Australia before police stop him. What is the real headline? Let's say three. Three. The real headline is number three. Okay. <laughs> 800 miles across Australia. Okay. And Alita, you are right, so you win a $100 gift card. A $100 cash gift card. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Jerry, we'll be right back. It's time for Man Crush Monday. Let's take a moment to appreciate the hottest new actor to come out of Australia, Jacob Lordy. He's on the cover of GQ's 28th Annual Men of the Year issue. Now, Jacob is making waves as the leading man, and the girls are living for it. He stars in the hit show Euphoria and is Elvis in the film Priscilla. So, Jacob, we just can't help falling in love with you. You can see more of Jacob on GQ.com, and that's today's Man Crush Monday. We'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. I hope something on today's show put a smile on your face. Tomorrow, R&B legends Belle Bim DeVoe will be here. Plus, comedian Robin Shaw is in my laugh lounge. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye.